uh, hi guys uh, welcome to my channel for another video uh, if you have not seen my previous video so please check the description and click on the link to uh, see the video hello friends i'm here with another exciting video uh, if you have not seen our previous video we did implement search functionality with a uh, category name and also with the product name uh, you can uh, search a product from our uh, product list right so here in this video we will allow user to add item to their cart what i mean if user click on this plus sign this item will go ahead and add to their cart so then they can purchase this item to submit an order okay so uh, what we need for this uh, we need to create a user cart table to our database right and then we can store uh user id and the product id uh, that they want to purchase okay so let's go ahead and stop it right so what we are going to do here uh, we're going to create a class with uh user id and product id so then we can store those value to retrieve it okay so let's go to our model class folder here I'm going to go ahead and add a class. I'll put this class name user cart. Okay. And I'll go ahead and copy the code and paste it here. I'll explain all, change it to public, right? And we're going to have a user cart ID. And here I will go ahead and store the uh, value for product ID, right? and then the user id who is going to order and then you can see uh, we also need to capture how many pieces user is ordering for per item right so so we did add this so now what we're going to do we need to also add this to our add db context class right so then we can up, we can do our migration okay so here i'll type prop change it to db set can do our migration here i'll go type it at migration add user cart to db i'll make sure uh you friends select this now you click enter i did succeed i'll click update database so just wait so now we just finished migration right let's go ahead open our sql server studio all right so here i can show you my database is this right and i'll go click on connect connect it to receive the updated result click on refresh all right open your database where you are storing table right and then check if you can see your user cards here if you if you can see your cards here or not so now you can see we have card with product id and then the user id and the uh, quantity of per item okay so let's minimize it uh what we are going to do now i'll go ahead and create a controller okay uh, through that controller we will go ahead and do our card operation right click on it go click click on controller i will click on add i'll keep this controller name as card controller okay remove this one from here click add here and then here i will go ahead copy this paste it here and change this function name is as add to card okay and then i'll make it as async function okay async what we need we need product id from there right so i'll put as a product id here so i'll put product id right and then let's go back to our index space again in our index space for our home index space okay so in our index space we have a product list right and then where we need to find out the symbol sign the plus symbol sign so this one right here you can let me make it bigger so you can see we have a uh, fa plus symbol over here right so here what we need to do 
we need to pass ID, okay? So to do that, I'll go ahead and have another anchor tag here, right? In this anchor tag, I will take all this inside this anchor tag, right? And then let's keep the name ASB action. So this should go to add to cart, right? And the controller should be ASP controller, which is a cart controller, right? And then we need to pass the ID when it is routing to that controller, okay? And then I'll put route, let's say product ID equal to, and we know this is under I add item dot ID. Okay, so now we have a product ID over here. So when user click on this plus sign, uh, it will route to our uh, card controller, okay? So then card controller, we have um, parameter here where we're going to receive the uh, product ID. We need to check if the user is signed in or not. So let's go ahead, put authorize here. So this means uh, this function only will allow to use if user is authorized, okay? To the, they are not signed into the system, it will route to our login page. And then once they log in uh, to, to our system, then they will, will able to use this function, okay? So yeah, we have to instantiate our database over here. So let's do it. Private read only, underscore DB, create a constructor, okay? I will go ahead and right click on it and then add a constructor. So now we add it. We also need to have user manager here as well. So let's add it here. And then we also need sign in manager to check if the user is signing or not, okay? Now let's add this to our constructor. So let's right click on it, click add to parameter and also right click on it, add to parameter. So now we have uh, DB here and then user manager and sign in manager. So let's go ahead and get the product that user want to add to cart. Okay. So I'll put path add to cart. And now we have the product that we want to add to cart, right? So what we are going to check here, we're going to check if the user is signing or not. Okay. If the user is signing, uh, we will go ahead and load the user. So to do that, I will go ahead and type here bar check if user signed in or not. Good. Sign in manager that is signed in. So it will return true if user signed in, right? I'll go ahead and do contact uh, to I'll I'll go ahead and use if condition to check check user signed in if it is true it will go into here right then I'll get the user here from the user manager dot get user ID okay so here I'll go ahead and load the user ID now if user not equal now that means user is there right and now we what we're going to do we're going to check if user has a card or not if user has a card we have to check if the user is buying the same product or uh, if the user is uh, buying a different product if user doesn't have a card then we'll go ahead and add a new item to user card okay so let me go ahead and copy the code and uh, explain to you okay we paste the code here so let me go ahead and explain, okay? So here, uh, what you can see inside this if condition, right? We are checking here if the signed in user has any card or not. What what it means that whoever signed into here, if they do have an existing card, will go ahead and get it here, okay? And then now, if that user existing card greater than zero, so that means he has a card, okay? And here I'll go ahead and check uh, if the item is already in the cart or not. What, uh, what it means if the item that user want to add, if it is already in that cart or not, right? If it is in that cart already, we just will add a quantity because it is already there. 
we just have to increase the quantity and then update the database right and then if the item is not there we'll go ahead and add that new item to his existing cart okay so here what we are doing if user has a cart but adding a new item means um he's adding new item to his existing cart and we are updating the quantity to one and then we are adding to it our user card let's say if user doesn't have any card right we'll come to here and in the else condition here right and then here we'll add a new item to to his new cards right and then after we done it we'll go ahead and then save save the database here i'll go type wait and save it right and then once we are done we will go ahead and route to our um, index space right so here index and then it should be it should be home okay we'll go ahead and route to there so let's go ahead and check it okay um let me go ahead run this project and i'll show you my database you can see our user card is empty right and let me check my username for our application so i have jack at gmail my username and then email id i will use this email id to log in and then try to add the uh, and then try to add card to our application let's try to add this one i'll make it a smaller let's make it a smaller open our visual studio do a small it right all right, so let's put a one debug point here, one inside here, one inside here, and then one inside here. So we will know what we are doing, okay? So I'll go ahead and click on add. It route to my login page and asking me to log in, okay? I'll put my password here. I'll click submit. Okay, after I submit, it is routing to my add to controller because uh, it knows my return url so uh, let me see my product id is to uh, 1020 you can see it i'll go ahead and continue since i do not have any item it will directly come into here okay so i'll go click continue you see it came into here and then adding this item to my user card and saving it here and routing to our home page click on continue okay so we are seeing an error because here we type view but we do not have any view that's name at two cards so actually what what was my plan my plan was to redirect to our index index page for our home controller i will go ahead and change it but uh we were successfully done up to here right let's go ahead and check if we did able to add the item to our card so let's go ahead click 1000 row so friends you can see we did able to add the item to our card you can see the product id and my user id is this the quantity is one okay so let me stop the project again change this to redirect to action okay and now run it again so our program is running so we did add this item to our cart let me go ahead and log in again here so i'll, I'll go ahead and add the same item to my card again to see if my implementation is working as expected or not let's click on it we are here now click on continue so now we are here inside it because it found the product already to my existing cart and it's saying we only going to add the quantity and update it so now you can see to route to our route to our index space okay you see it route to our index space let's go ahead and check our database okay all uh, right so now you see it increased quantity okay now what we're going to do we'll go ahead and add a new item right to our existing card click on add click continue and now you see it came here because we have a card but we are going to add a new item and the quantity would be one for this new item okay and now check our database again to see if it did correctly or not so now you do see we have new product id and the quantity is one so we are seeing our function is working as expected, okay? So let's go ahead, remove all this, and then try to add another product, right? See if it is working or not. Let's go ahead, open database again, check it. Okay, so it is working fine. So what we are seeing here, um, in our card, we see we have three items, right? In our next video, what we are going to do, we're going to have a card picture here, right? 
and then the count of total unique item that user have in their cart okay uh, see, see you in the next video thank you for watching the video see you in the next tutorial please do share like and subscribe the channel thank you bye